Rajbad attack on the BJP RSS over its Tiranga campaign in the 75th year of Indian independence. But should the Tiranga, the national flag, be hostage to politics in the first instance? Among my special guests will be the grandson of Mahatma Gandhi, Gopal Gandhi. Also, he's the new star of Indian athletics. Tejaswin Shankar wins a bronze at the Commonwealth Games in the high jump, but he almost didn't make it to the Games, had to take the Athletics Federation to court to actually compete. We'll tell you his story and much more on the news today. News without the noise. Presented by Aditya Birla Capital. Co-presented by Star Health Insurance, the health insurance specialist. Co-presented by JK Tire Ranger Series, stay wild at heart. Good evening, hello and welcome. You're with the news today. This is your primetime destination news. Newsmakers talking points, the big talking point this Thursday night. The political war that has broken out over the Tiranga. Who does the Tiranga belong to? A political party, an individual or the nation? We'll be joined by Gopal Gandhi among others. He'll be speaking to me later today. But uh, first, also Tejaswin Shankar, the high jumper who's created history. It's a roller coaster ride. He almost missed the Commonwealth Games. We'll tell you why in a moment. But first, as always, time for the nine headlines at nine tonight. Congress leader Rahul Gandhi declares he is not afraid of Narendra Modi. This on a day when top Congress leader Marikarjun Kharge is grilled by the enforcement directed for over seven hours and counting in the National Herald Pro. We are not intimidated. We are not afraid of Narendra Modi. Do you understand? Do what we have to do. There will Enforcement Directorate heat on Shiv Sena leader Sanjay Rao. The Sena MP's custody extended to August 8th in the Patra Chol scam case. Wife Varsha Rao, also summoned by the agency. Transactions from her account are also under the scanner. And Rahul Gandhi also takes on the RSS a day after BJP's Tiranga rally. Congress MP says RSS did not hoist the tricolour for 52 years. BJP hits back, claims Congress is showing pseudo-love for Tiranga. Telecom Minister Ashwini Vaishnav tells India today 5G rollout to be executed in the country by, the 20, by October 2022. Chief Justice of India N.V. Ramanna recommends Justice U.U. U. Lalit as his successor. If appointed, he will be the second CGI to be elevated to the Supreme Court bench from the bar. Ramanna set to retire on the 26th of August. Allahabad High Court denies bail to journalist Siddiq Kappan in the UAPA case. Kappan was arrested in October 2021 en route to Hathras to report on a Dalit woman's alleged rape and murder by a BJP leader's son. Kerala battles flood fury as incessant rains wreak havoc. Red alert declared in eight districts and flood warnings given to residents in low-lying areas. And after Nancy Pelosi's visit, China begins a military exercise around Taiwan, sends 27 jets into Taipei's air defense zones. Taiwan too deploys its jets. And India shines at the Commonwealth Games, beats Wales to book a hockey semis berth. Three boxers are short of medals. PV Sindhu and Kidambi Srikan reach the round of 16 in badminton. In the blue corner. But tonight's breaking news is the Enforcement Directorate's grilling of Congress leader Malikarjun Kharge in the National Herald case. Yeah. Questioning lasted for over seven hours and has just got over. Mr. Kharge was grilled over the young Indians company's financial transactions and business activities. Remember, Mr. Kharge is one of the trustees of the young Indian uh, company that was formed to take over National Herald and is a subject of an enforcement directorate inquiry at the moment. Listen in. 
Before initiation, I can't make any statement. I can't tell because it is investigation. Before initiation, I can't make any statement. A quick update from Munish Pandey, who is live from Herald House. Munish, give us a sense of what we are seeing at the moment. Yesterday, the Young India offices were sealed at the Herald House. Today, Malik Arjun Kharge being questioned for seven hours. And this, a day after, there was this large police presence around the houses of Rahul and Sonia Gandhi. What is the ED? What is the line that the ED is looking at? Why are all these, this interrogation now of Kharge once again taking place? He was earlier interrogated a few months ago. Yeah, well, uh, Rajdeep, as far as this uh, searches by the young in, uh, by the enforcement directed in connection to the uh, case uh, against young Indian private limited uh, case is concerned, yesterday there was a summon which was sent to Malikarjun Khadge and he was asked by the ED officials to present himself before the uh, YIL office uh, in the Herald House by 12.30, around 12.53, Mr. Malikarjun Khadge presented himself before the ED officials. Around 1 o'clock, the searches uh, were initiated by the ED officials at the premises of Young Indian Private Limited. From 1.30 to around 8.30 this evening, Malikarjun Khadge was questioned by the ED officials. We have been given to understand is that he was questioned regarding the business activities of Young Indian Private Limited. He was also questioned about the salaries of the person who have been or who are associated with Young Indian Private Limited and also regarding certain transactions of uh, this particular company where Rahul Gandhi and Sonia Gandhi are also director. Now, what ED is claiming that uh, Mr. Mallikarjun Khadge is the principal officer of Young Indian Private Limited. That is why his presence was important. His questioning was important because there were searches going on. And as per the procedure, when the searches are going on, then there should be an authorized person to sign on the papers which are being seized by the ED officials or examined by the ED officials. But because he has been associated with AJL, National Herald and also with Young Indian Private Limited, his uh, questioning was also important as far as this entire money laundering case is concerned. Right. Okay. okay. Munish Pandey, clearly the Enforcement Directorate creating a sense that they now are slowly but surely interrogating each of these senior Congress leaders. Will it eventually once again lead to the Gandhi family? That's the big question. Munish Pandey with those, those details. Now, remember, the Gandhi family is under the scanner in the Enforcement Directorate case in the National Herald case. But today, Congress MP Rahul Gandhi hit out at the Modi government a day after the ED had sealed the Young India office. Rahul called it an act by the ED to intimidate the Congress. And he maintained he is not scared of Prime Minister Modi. He will keep his fight on. The Gandhis and the BJP are also trading charges over the Modi government's Har Ghar Tiranga campaign initiative by the Prime Minister, with the Congress accusing the RSS of not hoisting the national flag at its headquarters for more than 52 years. Take a look. हम इंटिमिडेट नहीं होंगे हम नरेंद्र मोदी से नहीं डरते हैं समझ गए बात कर लें जो करना है Rahul Gandhi goes on the offensive a day after the enforcement directorate sealed the office of Young India Limited a private charity company run by the Gandhis the Congress MP lashed out at the Narendra Modi government he accused the ED of trying to intimidate them कुछ फर्क नहीं पड़ेगा जो हमारा काम है राहुल सुनिए सुनिए बोल बोलने दीजिए ठीक है जो मेरा काम है देश की रक्षा करना लोकतंत्र की रक्षा करना देश में जो हारमनी है उसको मेंटेन करना वो मैं करता रहूंगा ये कुछ भी कर लें कर लें कोई फर्क नहीं पड़ता Earlier, Rahul had slammed the barricading of the roads leading to Congress headquarters, his and his mother's residence on Wednesday evening for a brief period. His refrain, truth cannot be barricaded. The BJP has hit back at the Gandhis, saying the Congress leadership is running scared. Pradhan Mantri Ji has put a tiranga on every house. एक आह्वान किया है इसमें भी राजनीति करना और वो भी इस प्रकार की छोटी राजनीति करना ये फ्रस्ट्रेशन उचित नहीं है तिरंगा किसी पार्टी का नहीं है तिरंगा किसी व्यक्ति का नहीं है तिरंगा इस देश का है 
भारत मां का है आइए राहुल जी आप भी तिरंगा फहराइए फेस ऑफ ओवर हेरेल्ड कम्स राइट आफ्टर द वॉर ओवर तिरंगा On Wednesday opposition MPs had skipped a bike rally held by the center to promote Har Ghar Tiranga Drive that exhorts all citizens to hoist the national flag at home to celebrate Independence Day. While top BJP leaders changed their display pictures to the tricolor, Congress leaders posted an image of Jawaharlal Nehru with a tricolor made of khadi. The Congress accused the RSS of not hoisting the tricolor for over 50 years even after the independence. The party also pointed out that neither the RSS nor its chief Mohan Bhagwat had changed their Twitter DPs to tricolor. The RSS however has come out in support of the Prime Minister's Har Ghar Tiranga Drive. Ki azadi ke amrut mahotsav ke bare mein koi rajneeti nahi honi chahiye. Sabhi logon ko राजनीति के ऐसे ऐसी राजनीति छोड़कर सबको उसको मनाने में ही पूरा ध्यान केंद्रित करना चाहिए ट्राई कलर एंड नेशनल हेरल्ड राहुल गांधी ट्विन अटैक्स ऑन नरेंद्र मोदी गवर्नमेंट हैव वर्सेंट द पॉलिटिकल वॉर इज द ईडी इन्वेस्टिगेशन टू इंटिमिडेट एज द कांग्रेस क्लेम्स और हैज इट अन अर्थ एनी प्रूफ ऑफ रॉन्ग डूइंग बाय द गांधी फाइट इज नो वे नियर इट्स क्लाइमैक्स ब्यूरो रिपोर्ट इंडिया टूडे So battle lines drawn on enforcement directorate and now also on the Tiranga controversy Har Ghar Tiranga in the 75th year of independence the prime minister's call to have the national flag hoisted on every home and that's what I want to focus on for a moment my first guest today is Gopal Krishna Gandhi public intellectual author uh former civil servant diplomat and of course uh, governor of west bengal and the grandson of mahatma gandhi appreciate you joining us gopal gandhi from chennai i want to ask you on this tiranga controversy your view the prime minister narendra modi says he is inviting citizens to hoist the national flag atop their houses for 3 days from august 13 to 15 your views do you believe this will really infuse a sense of patriotism or is it more symbolism than substance I do not think uh, this should be spoken of in terms of controversy at all. I do not see anything controversial in uh, the Prime Minister's uh, statement in what he has asked us to do. I think what he has said is a very fine example of uh, the nation's uh, leader, that Prime Minister, asking his fellow citizens to join him in an act of uh, patriotism. Three days and hoisting of flags in houses is a matter of detail. But I think this is the time, the 75th anniversary of our independence, that we should all rejoice in our flag. Let me raise three reasons, though, uh, 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 Dr. Gandhi, why it's become a controversy, Gopal Gandhi. Number one, there are those who are saying this is symbolism. that this is not about substance you're just not in a way embracing the values you need to embrace the values that the tiranga represents not just place a flag atop your house values of compassion or brotherhood of inclusion symbols are aids to substance they do not replace substance symbols are necessary for that matter other symbols like the national emblem the national anthem are also great facilitators of the substance of freedom and of our republic i think it is very important for us to know that the symbol of the national flag which has been the symbol of struggle the symbol of sacrifice should now also be the symbol of national unity i think it is very important to have some symbol the national emblem the national anthem the national flag are those essential symbols in which we must exult the second controversy that has emerged mr gandhi is the fact that it is being seen purely in political terms uh that in a way this is what the congress says that the prime minister's har ghar campaign is almost as if uh, the bjp and mr modi are trying to monopolize patriotism 
nationalism, want them to be identified, the individual and the political party with the Tiranga. Uh, according to critics, uh, the BJP didn't fully, or the RSS didn't fully participate in the freedom struggle. Who are they uh, to hoist the flag? The government of the day, whether at the union level or at the states, is responsible for the people of the country or the state. The symbol of the national flag has been associated with every prime minister of India from the first prime minister onwards. There is an indistinguishable connection, an inextricable connection between Prime Minister Jawaharlal Nehru, who unfurled the flag on the first day of our independence, and that has been the case with every subsequent prime minister. So I think it is not only the prime minister's right, but the prime minister's privilege to mm -hmm. identify the national flag with the national aspirations of the national government. And I use the word national government, not in the sense of a coalition government, but in the sense of the government of the nation of the day. I would also like to say here that when we see the flag, we see not just the government, but we see the nation and the freedom struggle, and we see some individuals like Netaji Subhash Chandra Bose, who identified himself with the flag in a very special way. when he said, Dilli Chalo. And Nehru, on the day he unfurled the flag for the first time, invoked Netaji and said something like this, not his exact words, but something like this, that it should have been Subhash Bose who should have been unfurling the flag today. So it is beyond parties and beyond governments. And the government of the day, the prime minister of the day, speak for history and they speak for the country as a whole. So you are interestingly saying that this message of Har Ghar Tiranga should not be seen as Narendra Modi's message or the BJP's message. You see this as a continuum to use your words, stretching back to our founding fathers and dare I say our mothers uh, leading up to Mr. Modi today. Am I right? It is very important that you spoke of founding mother. It is very important you did so because Madame Kama is one of the earliest names of persons associated with an evolution of the flag which has become our national flag. Yes, it has been associated with every prime minister and the red fort and the rampart of the red fort on which every prime minister has unfurled the flag has placed the flag beyond controversy. Beyond not only controversy, but beyond any possibility of controversy. The only thing we have to be mindful of is what you, Rajdeep, said very correctly. The substance behind the symbol. The substance is of compassion, of mutual respect, going well beyond tolerance. Not just tolerance, but well beyond tolerance. And when we use the phrase Tiranga, which means the three colors of the flag, we should not forget the fourth color, which is the blue of the wheel at the center of the flag. The blue of the wheel, which represents dharma, which represents our commitment to justice, which Dr. Ambedkar has placed at the heart of the preamble to the Constitution, in which justice, social, economic, and political, comes before liberty, equality, and fraternity. So it is the tiranga with the need of the wheel at the center. The, the final reason for this political controversy, Mr. Gandhi, is because, as I said, the BJP is seen as part of the wider Sangh Parivar and the RSS for decades, from 1950 to 2002, was accused of not unfurling the national flag on important days, instead unfurling its own saffron flag. And therefore, the political opposition, especially Rahul Gandhi, raising objections, saying the national flag belongs to all, uh, doesn't belong to what uh, to the Sangh Parivar or the BJP. The Sangh Parivar or the BJP can't claim, in a sense, ownership of the flag. The national flag belongs to the nation. When it is unfurled, it is unfurled by the nation. And it belongs as much to the opposition as it does to the party or parties in power. Nobody has a monopoly over the flag, but everyone has a duty to the flag. And I think 
responsible Indians, whether political or non-political, in office or out of office, must see in the flag that spirit which actuated the struggle for freedom, and not only the struggle for freedom before 1947, but the continuous struggle for justice, which the Sakra at the, at the center of it represents, and the struggle which continues today. And justice includes justice to all, justice to the minorities, of every description, not just ethnic, linguistic, and religious, but every description. It is the flag of India, not the flag of any particular Indian. Very interesting the way you are putting it. In conclusion, what you would you therefore advise the opposition in particular and to an extent the government as should they celebrate 75 years of independence together? Rather than all these various competing campaigns, Har Ghar Tiranga and the Congress going with Nehru holding the flag, ideally they should all be celebrating it together, surely. That's absolutely right. Janda Uncha Rehe Hamara is about hum, about us, about we, the people of India, described in Sanskrit in the translation of the preamble as Vayam Aratasya Janaha. And in Hindustani, as Hum Hindaki Awam. Beautifully put there, Gopal Gandhi. I appreciate you joining us and reflecting the spirits and the values that the Tiranga represents. Thank you very much. It also sets off today's uh, top talking point. Why this politics then over the Tiranga? Har Ghar Tiranga. Is this symbolism or is it an act of inspiration? Is it only a political tool? Is the BJP bidding to monopolize patriotism? Can the government and opposition at least bury the hatchet on such issues? Joining me now for a quick face-off, Shehzad Punawala is the BJP's evergreen spokesperson and Rahul Rohan Gupta is the Congress's spokesperson. To you, uh, uh, Shehzad Punawala, you heard what Gopal Gandhi said. Do you agree with his sentiments? Do you agree with Gopal Gandhi when he says that this is an occasion to celebrate Har Ghar Tiranga or the Tiranga at least together as one, not as BJP or Congress or Modi versus Rahul Gandhi. If you see last eight years, uh, Rajdeep, whatever national mission the Prime Minister has started, Har Ghar Shochale, Har Ghar Nal Se Jal, Har Ghar Ujwala, he has invited all opposition members to participate. Har Ghar Tiranga, how is it partisan? In fact, let me tell you what is partisan. Rajdeep, when the first Prime Minister of this country, Nehruji's 125th uh, celebrations was done by Congress, they did not invite Prime Minister Narendra Modi. This is their mindset. In fact, we have invited for every program, and this is the Tiranga bike rally letter. All MP were invited. Adhir Ranjan Chaudhary came on your channel and he said, we were not invited, therefore we did not go. This is the letter, if I'm lying. Secondly, please tell me that this Tiranga, does it belong to a political party? Does it belong to one ideology? This is our Tiranga. Those who are flying the flag of one community or one parivar, they are opposing this Har Ghar Tiranga. And how is Har Ghar Tiranga national, uh, too much nationalism? I'll give one more example. Azadi Ka Amrit Mahotsav. Whom are we celebrating? We are celebrating Yogdan of all our leaders, including Sardar Patel. Was he a congressman? No. He was a congressman. He was not he a BJP was a man. Congressman. He was a congressman. But they forgot. Because they wanted to celebrate Indiraji's date on 31st October, never did they celebrate uh, Sardar Patel. They defeated Ambedkarji twice. They never gave Ambedkarji Bharat Atna for four decades. They are the ones who ignored Bhagwan Birsa Munda. We are celebrating all of these people. But one day, if they have celebrated Azadi Ka Amrit Mahotsav, one tweet they have done, I will change my name. Okay. You don't have to change your name just uh, yet. Rajdeep, no, I'm no, just no, 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 last line, one last line. Yeah, yeah, I'm just nice grateful name. Modi ji did not say oxygen acha hai. Vanna Rohan would stand like this with his nose closed saying oxygen ka bahish ka raj se. Okay, one minute. Rohan Gupta, you know, this is a surely a needless controversy. If the, if the government of the day is encouraging people to hoist the national flag on their, uh, at their houses, how does it become a BJP campaign? How does it become personal to Mr. Modi. You can join in and celebrate even more enthusiastically than the BJP. Uh, Rajdeep, we have seen that the BJP spokesperson's knowledge about history is not in depth because obviously he has joined BJP recently. Before that, he has history of uh, uh, working with Congress party. So let me remind him few facts. 
Hedgeva, who was the chief of RSS from 1925 to 1940, he opposed Dandi Yatra. He told that we should not participate in this Yatra because we do not want to take fight with the British rule. This is what he did. 1929 Lahore Adivation, the Poon Swarajya resolution was passed and the whole country was invited to unfurl the flag on 1930, 26th of January. What Hedgeva did? He gave the call that no, you have to unfurl the RSS flag. This is their nationalism. After that, 1940, Golwarka, when he became the chief, he, he ensured that 1942, Hind Chodo, Bharat Chodo Andolan, they never participated. After that, when uh, in on the eve of independence, when the tricolor was to be unfurled next day, what their comment, organized as the comment was, the word three is itself evil. And a flag having three colors will certainly produce a bad psychological effect and injuries to the country. Where, where there is a respect for Tiranga. Another thing, he was talking about Sardar Patelji. 1948, when Sardar Patelji banned RSS for one and a half years, the condition for removing that revoking ban, that they will respect national flag. And after so much of time, the RSS had to expect, uh, accept that, and then they were allowed to, uh, that the ban was removed. After that, for 50 years, they, they have never unfurled national flag on their headquarters and they are trying to talk about nationalism no see the issue rajdeep here is about optics you need to have tiranga in your heart when you say that hargar tiranga yes it is a welcome step but behind that what you are doing the tiranga is attached with khadi khadi is the sign of self reliance khadi is khadi is sign of our independence 1.5 crore people their reliance is on khadi their employment is on khadi when this the government changed the national flag code they, it means that it allowed polyester fabric now let me tell our friend from bjp that india is the biggest importer of polyester fabric from china when this government when when they talk about making in India and they do not have capacity to ensure that 120 crore flags they can make out of Khadi, it means it is going to boomerang. You are supporting China okay. somewhere. So, okay. so you, not you, you, made, you made two or three multiple points. Let's come one by one to them. Yeah. The most important point, Shahzad Punawala, is basically the history of the Sangh Parivar That's with right. the national flag. Golwalkar, whom Mr. Modi in the past has called his guru, has described the tricolor as Patan ki Nishani. Hmm. In, the, in 1947, in the organizer, it was said, even the people who are in power today because of fate thrust the tricolor in our hands. Hindus will neither respect it nor accept it. The number three in itself is inauspicious. Over the years, the fact is that the BJP has, or the Sangh Parivar has had a difficult relationship with the national flag. Now you are hoisting it because you want to take political benefit out of it. The optics, as Rohan Gupta is saying, are being used. It's not about values, it's about political optics. Your response. Rajdeep, I, because I want to delve into history, I'll just request one minute from you. Please give me one minute. First, let me, uh, Khadi, today you know the Khadi. No, no, let, no please answer you, okay, the question. You want me to start from RSS? I, I I'll want... start from RSS and go to Khadi. Say, no, no, okay, first okay. RSS. Okay. Please. RSS is history. By the way, Rahul had said RSS killed Gandhi, for which he's going to Bhivandi court. But let me now correct the facts on RSS. Mr. Hegdevar in 1921 was charged with sedition. When he came out of jail in 1922, Motilal Nehru welcomed Hegdewar. him in a gathering. By the way, when there was a Dandi, there are three main movements in our national struggle. The Dandi Satyagraha, the Salt Satyagraha, which was done in coastal areas. But because you could not do it in all areas, in areas like Vidarbha, in the interior areas, it was the Jungle Satyagraha led by people like Dr. Hegdewar, who went to jail for nine months in Yavatmal. Then when the RSS was formed in 1925 and then the first movement that came about uh, it, it was 1930 was the Dandi Salt Satyagraha. In 1942 it was the In Quit India movement. The Quit India movement, the Chimurashti Satyagraha, Vidarbha, Chandrapur, Amravati, Vardha, all of this was led by RSS people, RSS leaders like Dada Nayak were at the forefront. Please let me complete. I am giving you historical facts. Balaji Raipurkar was killed in police firing. One. You are not answering one. my one question. Answering the RSS has historically, no, no, no. RSS has historically opposed the tricolor. Opportunity. Let me please correct you. Let me no, because you're not one answering minute my of question. Facts. Rajdeep, this is important for me. Please give me one minute. Okay. Then you counter me with whatever questions you have. Please, sir. Has the RSS please, sir. I am, I am, I am answering, Rajdeep. I beg of your indulgence. Da Balaji Raipurkar gave his life for the struggle. Hemu Kalani, RSS worker, 1943, was killed, sentenced to death. In, on 11th of August 1942, in Patna, there were six people who were shot down for unfurling the flag. Two of them were RSS people, Devipat Chaudhary and Jagatpati Kumar. Now, I am asking a question. 
can Mr. Rohan Gupta name two leaders from Congress who gave the highest, I'm not talking about Mahatma Gandhi in 1948, two leaders of Congress who were sentenced to death or gave up their life while fighting the struggle. Like we have Bhagat, Bhagat, like we have Bhagat Singh, no, 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 no. don't, don't come in his defense, Rajdeep. Bhagat Singh, Rajguru, Sukhdev, I have given you four names of RSS, one name of Congress party who has given the ultimate sacrifice for freedom struggle. Leave Gandhi ji because it was in 1948. He was killed by Gorse. By the way, they have taken Gorse supporters in their party. No, 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 Rajdeep. Name one. No, no. Name one. You must name not two. raise your voice. Name He's two. Still raising the voice. Name two. Because one. you are interrupting I, me. You didn't interrupt minute, him. Sir. I asked you a simple question. I didn't interrupt both of you in your initial you comments. Now I want you to I answer specific questions. Do you agree? We are talking about the national flag. I have no doubt about the patriotism of every Indian who fought in the freedom struggle. I asked you a simple question. Has the RSS historically opposed the tricolor or not? Yes. Have uh, you now changed this. your mind? Let me answer this yes question. Yes or no? Let me answer this question, Rajdeep, and please don't interrupt me. He said 52 years we did not raise the national flag on the RSS headquarters. Rajdeep, till 2002, the flag code was amended by the Vajpayee cabinet, Mr. P. D. Shinoy committee's recommendations. That all citizens could then fly it after 26 Jan 2002. No individual or any private institution could raise the national flag. Point number one. And then in 2004, it was Naveen Jindal's case which gave us all the right to the Supreme Court. I asked them that why for 50, 60 years they never allowed any private individual or entity, be it Rajdeep, Shah or India Today or any other institution privately to raise the national flag. Point, point number one. Point number two. Please listen. I am telling you on 11th August 1942 to raise the flag designed by, which was considered to be our national flag at that point of time, was two RSS leaders, Mr. Devi Prasad Chaudhary and Jagat Pati Kumar, gave up their lives. They were shot by the cops. Has by the, the British RSS Earth. historically listen, opposed the tricolor? I am yes asking or no? you. I'm, yes or no? What uh, what opposition has if they are RSS living? Has historically has any the Congress yes leader no? has any Congress leader given up their life to unfold the national flag at a government secretary? Okay, I will ask him that. And last last point, Rajdi, please. Mm -hmm. If this man is showing so much knowledge about the national flag, Mr. Go Gupta, without looking at the Google, answer who designed question, the national no? flag? Answer who designed the, the national flag? Who designed yeah, the national you, flag? You started one minute, with one minute. Who I designed the national flag? One second, don't defend it. Rohan who designed Gupta. the national flag? Who designed the no, national flag? No, you know, uh, Let him answer. Shazad, today you are changing the goal. Let post. him answer. He knows so much no, about the national flag. I Who designed the national flag? I want to ask you. Don't no. let him Google. Let him answer. No, no. What's up to me? You answer his question. Now you saw. He I does want, not know I who want, designed the national but flag. But Rohan Gupta, the simple question is that while they have an ambivalent relationship with the national there is flag no that they cannot deny. There is no ambivalent. The okay, there is no you have to real recognize in 2022, instead of going into the past, let's look to the future. There you had Gopal Gandhi also saying, this is an occasion to celebrate. Prime Minister Modi wants to celebrate the Tiranga. Why not get involved? Why this unwillingness to get involved with anything that the Prime Minister or the Government of India does? Surely the Tiranga is above po uh, politics or even history. Let's focus on today, 2022. Let's celebrate it together. Why this constant battle with Mr. Modi and the RSS even on the Tiranga now? See, it's not about battle with Mr. Modi Rajdi. As see, he could not answer your questions, and the way they have disrespected Tiranga in past, it shows the intent of this government, right? You need to have Tiranga in your heart, where every citizen is happy, where you are tri you are respecting tricolor. Who designed the tricolor, sir? Who designed the national flag? Do you yeah, know the minute, answer? One minute. He Prime does not even know the answer. He had Prime once asked Samit Patra. About Pingari, one second. No, no, no. Why are you giving him the answer, Rajdeep? Why are you giving him the answer? He had once asked Samit Patra how many zeros are there in 5 trillion. That GK question was allowed by you. I am today asking him he did not know Pingali Venkaya. You have Pink, given him the answer. Are, and no, no, no. One second, Rajdeep. On Khadi. Let's make it what very clear. Very Between 2014 to 2022, the Khadi sales have gone up to 1 lakh crore. It has gone up by 172% in growth. And there has been 248% in sales. I so they cannot lecture us. And I'm asking. On Khadi, they leaders, cannot lecture you because on Khadi, as you rightly said. Khadi, no, no. One minute, sir. On Khadi, I... It's my view, and certainly the facts facts bear it out that there has been an exponential growth in the profits of, uh, uh, of, of KBIC. But... The question that I want to ask, and Shehzad, why not concede this? That 52 years you had an ambivalent relationship, we are in 2022, let's celebrate it together. Rajdeep, Isn't okay. that a better way to, to let's move ahead Rajdeep, jointly? Rajdeep. Why doesn't the Prime Minister invite Sonia Gandhi okay. tomorrow and say, let's, let me answer this ambivalent... kick off, let's kick off Har Ghar Tiranga together? Okay, let me answer this ambivalent relationship once and for all for 
posterity on the RSS. I am telling you where my RSS leader, Dr. Hegdevar was. He was in Chimurashti Satyagra. He was in Jungle Satyagra. He was, Himu Kalani ji was sentenced to that. I am giving you a list of RSS leaders who gave their life up for independence. Now I ask one question of Rohan Gupta. Where was Antonia Maino and her father, Stefano Maino? One second. No, no, no. Ambivalent relationship, no? My party and organization, I have given you the four names who have given up their lives. Hemu Kalani, Devipat Chaudhary, Jagatpati Kumar, Balaji Raipurkar, they gave up their lives. He can't name one Congress leader who gave up their life for independence. I am asking him if my RSS leaders, after giving up their life, have an ambivalent relationship for independence. Stefano Maino, who was there? There were thousands Stefano and thousands of Indians, Congress, who's leading Congress, other parties who's who leading spent Congress? years in jail. Mr. Hegdevar was in Congress also, before 1925. Okay, I will give... Mr. Hegdevar okay. was in Congress? Rohan, Rohan, Thank you. Rohan, Rohan, Rohan Gupta, final word. You know, let's assume the BJP organizes a bike rally which we are showing on the national flag. BJP MPs attended. Why can't Congress? Let's rise above some issues, Rohan. That's the only way forward. Uh, see, Rajdeep, I told you why we are opposing. We are not opposing the idea. Har ghar tiranga, har dil tiranga. It's a national movement. We should be all happy. What's happening, Rajdeep, you need to understand here. See, when you are allowing polyester fabric for, for the print of flag, what happens? You don't have 120 crore flags. Because we are importing uh, polyester from China, you are increasing your trade with China. You are supporting China. That is there in, in their heart. If you, if you are serious about it, you should have ensured that Khadi movement, which our Prime Minister always used to talk in monkey bath, they should have promoted Khadi to such a level that even 120 crore flags we should have made at home. It's not about opposing Tiranga. It's about the way this government is killing even Khadi. 1.2 crore people are dependent okay. on Khadi. 10 crore so people are second. dependent on Khadi. One second. If okay, so fine. Not my, okay, you made your point. You made your point. My that. final word to you, Shahzad, 30 seconds. Surely, the government also must recognize that while you are doing this event marketing, as some are calling it, around the Tiranga, the Tiranga is above all marketing. The Tiranga is above all individual. The Tiranga represents certain values. Mm. Do you concede that? And therefore, it would be appropriate in a way to somehow find a much more collective way where parliament comes together to celebrate Tiranga. This is not about one party against the other. Yes or my, no? My leader says Harghar Tiranga and that is marketing of Tiranga. One party appropriates, misappropriates the name of Mahatma Gandhi and uses it. And Mahatma Gandhi's only philosophy or principle was disband Congress after independence and does not follow that. In fact, comes down on the streets to defend corruption. And they are doing service to principles and values. Okay. And we are doing marketing. One last question, Rao, uh, Rajdeep. We have increased the gross sales of Khadi by 248% in the last eight years. Rohan should tell us how many percent they increased it and he should shut yeah. us up on Khadi. Okay. Because he clearly can't tell us where Stefano Maino and Antonio Maino's family was. Okay. I have told you, you where my RSS family was. No, let's leave it there. This was about the national flag. In fact, these are issues which do not need polarized debates. These need ideally an India where we come together rising above political loyalties and coming in a way to confronting the past and facing the future with optimism. Shahzad Punawala and Rohan Gupta. Thank you very much for joining me. Let me come from there to my other big controversy, which is actually a good news today story. Because yesterday at the Commonwealth Games, late night, India won its first track and field medal. The first time an Indian has won a medal in the men's high jump. Tejaswin Shankar was the Indian hero as he won a medal in that category. But that wasn't the end of the story. The image that you see on the right-hand side of the screen was of Tejaswin while the opening ceremony was going on at the Commonwealth. He was not picked initially in the Indian Athletic Squad because he didn't compete in an interstate meet in Chennai. He's from the University of Kansas and that's where the NCAA, he had got the high, he had actually achieved the automatic qualifying mark but was not chosen. So, as you can see, he was spending his time at home in Delhi while the opening ceremony was going on. At the last minute, he managed to get into the Commonwealth Games and guess what? He won a bronze yesterday. This is a story that reflects all that is wrong with Indian sport, especially at Olympic level. I spoke a short while ago to the Athletics Federation of India Chief, Adil Sumariwala. Listen in to what he had to say.
And joining me now from Birmingham is the president of the Athletics Federation of India, former Olympian and 100 meters champion, uh, Adil Sobariwala. Mr. Sobariwala, they just finished Shankar doing the country proud by what he achieved in the high jump, the first track and field medal for India. But he seems to have achieved this despite the system. Not because of it. Y'all made it appears the Athletics Federation simply did not realize that Tejaswini was a medal prospect and you were actually denying him a right to be part of the Indian team simply because he didn't participate in the interstate tournament. So I'm not going to get into today is not a day to get into this uh, this sort of a conversation. Today is a day to celebrate. Um, uh, the only thing I want to say is there is a process. If you don't follow a process, you are bad. If you follow a process, you are even worse. So I don't want to say anything beyond that. Uh, we worked very hard to get his entry at the end. Um, today is the day to celebrate. Mm -hmm. I think uh, Tejasini deserves it. And that's all I'm going to say for the time being. I don't think Athletic Federation of India did anything wrong. But, uh, uh, but, Mr. Subariwala, but, but Mr. Subariwala, you're one saying one this is a moment. No, no, but Mr. Sec, Mr. Sec, Mr. Subariwala, sec, you're saying this is a moment to celebrate. No, no. But how do you celebrate? How do you celebrate when an athlete has to go to court against your federation to even get to the Commonwealth Games? He had achieved all the marks at the University of Kansas, and yet you were I'm insisting on an interstate into, trial. Not it sets a very a bad very, example. That's a very long discussion. I think I think you people know only very small bits of how this thing happened. Let me tell you, the selection committee has five Padma Shris, five Olympians, five Arjuna awardees. I'm not even on the selection committee. I'm only an ex officio member. We have they have followed due process, and that's all I can tell you. And secondly, the court has not ordered him to be selected. We, when we could drop one athlete who was unfit, we dropped that athlete who was unfit and selected him. There is a quota, so we had to fill that quota. So let's not get it's a very complex issue, so let's not get into it. Uh, and Mr. Sumariwala, that's a terribly, I'm sorry to intervene, but that's a terribly bureaucratic. You are a, you've been a sports person yourself. Look at what Tejaswin had to go through even to get to the CWG. You can have all the Padma Shris and all the Olympians on your selection committee, but if they deny an athlete of such uh, quality uh, a, an opportunity to reach the Commonwealth Games, which eventually he got only at the last moment, I mean, what does it say? What does it say about our system? It says the system is strong. It says the system is strong. You can say we are bureaucratic. You can say what you want, but that's not the fact of the case. I'm sorry to say that this is not. It, I love I love uh, channels trying to get TRPs and eyeballs, but that's not the fact of the case. The facts of the case are completely different. It's not going to be in ten minutes to be explained how how the selection process works. It's that selection process was put on the website in January on January 18th. 2022. So I'm not going to get into uh, a tutu meme with you on this, but let me tell you whatever Mr. was no, put I'm on sorry, the web. Mr. Subariwala, been... you're dodging the question. Mr. Subariwala, no, 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 no. on the 17th of June this year, you were quoted as saying the decision made on team selection is final. We have sent the list of 37 players chosen by the selection committee to the 36, IOA. 36, we can remove names, 36. but we can't add to the list. Here was someone who had achieved all your marks just because he had done it at the NCA and not your interstate. You didn't give him an opportunity. He's won, I repeat, despite the it's system. You're wrong. You're not because wrong. of it. You are, you're wrong. We, we are celebrating, you're wrong. but Indian yes. officials can't you celebrate. Are wrong again. Rajdeep, you are wrong again. There are six other people who had also the 44 people have achieved qualifying standards. Please understand you're wrong again. 40, 44 people had achieved qualifying standards. Our quota was 36. From October onwards, we've been asking to increase the quota, which we did not succeed to do through IOA. So, so you don't have all the facts. So don't even try. Don't even try and play this good boy here because there are a lot of issues. So who, that do, you we hold have to... so who do you hold responsible? Okay, so that was Adil Sumariwala defending that decision. 
But remember, the reason I'm focusing on this is because after all that, after all that red tapeism, virtually not being allowed to go to the Commonwealth Games, taking the Athletics Federation to court, Tejaswin has in a way celebrated by winning a bronze medal. And I spoke to him a short while ago. Listen to him from Birmingham. Tejaswin, I don't think any athlete has gone through a roller coaster like you in the last few weeks and months. What was it like yesterday when you finally made it to the podium? So it was great. The medal at, in the competition was like cherry, cherry on top of a cake. So I'm extremely happy that I was able to bring a medal for the country and you know do my best on that given day. So that doesn't mean that the other competitors were any less. It was just that you know I had a good day that day and I was able to bring a medal. So I'm extremely happy that it ended the way it did. You know, did you wear the medal around your neck last night when you went to sleep? Oh yeah, so last night by the time we uh, got done with all the doping control and all the other interview formalities, I think it was 12 o'clock by the time I got done there. So I took a, I think we took a cab or with a couple of my friends, we went to McDonald's, we ate and I had the medal on my neck throughout and even I think I got here this morning and I still had the medal around my neck and I just like, you know, put it under so that nobody could see it. But I just wanted to keep it there, I wanted to keep that feeling and I was so excited to just just to be here is such a big feeling for me to represent my country but then to contribute to the medal tally I, I, I always thought that it was a dream and today like yesterday my dream was you know I was able to actually see it happen unfold in front of my eyes so nothing gives me more joy than being able to contribute to India's medal tally. You know winning a high jump and then going to McDonald's they just win but till a few days ago it was not even certain whether you would get to participate in the Commonwealth Games. You had to take the Athletics Federation to the court in the end would I be right in saying that you have achieved what you have despite the system and not because of it? Sir, I feel like, I mean, like I said, the one thing that sport always teaches is to overcome adversity and how you make the most of the opportunity that's given to you. So, in the end, I was given an opportunity, you know, I mean, yes, it might have been in the last week, but I was given an opportunity to come here and compete. So, at that point, at that point, once I knew that I had that opportunity, I knew that I wanted to do my best and make the most of that opportunity and, you know, prove a point that, yes, I can do it also. So, um, that's why I tried to make the most of that opportunity. And, you know, once I got here, the only thought in, thought in my mind was, yes, we want to do our best. We want to jump high and we want to... Um, you know, win a medal for the country. So I didn't have any other thoughts about, you know, what happened back in India, what not, because once we leave the country, a lot of things happen inside people's house, but once you leave your house, once you leave the country, the only goal that everybody has is to increase the medal tally and to bring the best performances for your country. And that's what all of us came here to do. And I'm so happy that, you know, everybody supported me in this conquest and I was able to do well yesterday. But are, are you still angry at any level, Tejaswani, that you had to fight at every level even to get to the Games? You know, I just find it absurd that sportsmen have to go to court to get selected even though they've matched all the qualifying marks. Not at all. I mean, today I have the medal, so everything's in the past at this point. So, upset, not upset. I think we can talk about these things all day long, but I feel like... In retrospect, you know, you can argue this could happen, that could happen, but I feel like we should always keep moving forward, be progressive, and now I feel like everybody should come together and celebrate the medal that, you know, it's our country's medal, it's not just my medal, it's, it's something that we have achieved as Indians. It's, I mean, yeah, I might be the person who's bringing the medal to the country, but I feel like it's our country's medal, and I think that's something that fills my heart with pride, and I'm more excited about that possibility than anything else. You know, lovely words. I just want to leave you with one final question. I saw a picture of yours in a dhoti, sleeping at home and we'll play that, watching the CWG opening ceremony only over the weekend. At that stage, did you ever think that you would be on a podium barely a few days, a week later? No, so when we were sitting at home, my mom jokingly said and she said, I mean, I, she said that, you know, I feel like you'll be in the same position watching the high jump finals. And I said, please, mom, you don't have to do it. So, I mean, next day I found out that I was going and then, you know, things happened fast. So, yes, at that moment, I didn't even know if I was going. But the moment I knew I was going, I set my mind to the fact that, yes, if I want to go, if I'm going there, then I want to not just be a, you know, like just another member of the team, but I want to be a contributing member of the team. And that's what my whole... Uh, 
last three four days have been you know i was constantly thinking about the fact that i want to make the most of this opportunity i want to make the most of this opportunity and i'm glad that i was able to do it one final question your parents especially your father had a major role to play in your success presumably this medal dedicated to them so my mother played a major role in my success my mother's always been you know she's been a big supporter of me doing sport when i was young my dad didn't want me to do sport to be honest with you and he thought he always wanted me to do cricket but my mom would sneak me out of the house you know and maybe during lunch break i didn't want to come home or if i had like to go to school early in the morning she would drop me off and my father was sleeping so things like that she always supported me and even through this journey till the commonwealth games medal she's always been with me she's she's always been supporting me and you know she's always been there for me and i'm extremely happy that i'll be able to take this medal back to my mother well tejaswin shankar i was up last night 2 am watching you do that remarkable first ever high jump medal for india keep scaling new heights and doing the country proud thanks very much for joining me and as you think of that story think about uh, just what it takes sometimes even in india today to reach the very top i hope this is a wake up call for some of our officials who tend to be extremely bureaucratic let's take a break on the other side we'll bring you the shocker from uttar pradesh's prayagraj you've got to see this there is another india even in this 75th year of independence that we need to change back in a moment I don't read the news. I read between the lines to tell you the true version of events, the true story of our times. To document grief, the toughest assignment for any journalist to be. From those who matter, women politicians going to stick up for each other. Of those who should matter, I document the truth. I don't distort the truth. I don't glamorize the truth. I don't gloss over the truth. The ghosts of India's contentious medieval history have come knocking again. I hustle for the truth on the ground, in the newsroom, in the I studio. I don't try to grab eyeballs. I inform you to make you see the point. To the point with Preeti Chaudhary at these times only on India Today. NASA beamed doctors into the middle of the International Space Station while they were physically on Earth. This might seem like a scene from a sci-fi movie, but this technology now exists. NASA tried this new method to ensure medical help is provided to people in adverse situations. This is being called the first holoportation handshake from Earth in space. So what is holoportation and how does it work? According to NASA it is a capture technology that allows high quality 3D models of people to be reconstructed compressed and transmitted live anywhere in real time when these images are combined with mixed reality displays such as hololens it allows users to see hear and interact with remote participants in 3D the technology gives a feeling as if the person is right in front of you NASA says that the technology could be highly effective in deep space where communication lag is a major problem due to the immense distance between earth and other objects Using the Microsoft HoloLens Kinect camera with custom software, NASA flight surgeon Dr. Joseph Schmidt and their teams were holoported. They interacted with astronaut Thomas Pesquet in a two-way conversation. Holoportation is not new. It has been in use since at least 2016 by Microsoft. But this was the first use in such an extreme and remote environment as space. Make your media plans smarter with India Today Live TV on your connected devices.
वेलकम बैक नाउ वी आर सेलिब्रेटिंग आजादी का अमृत महोत्सव 75 इयर्स ऑफ इंडियन इंडिपेंडेंस एंड देयर इज मच दैट हैज बीन अचीव्ड इन इंडिया ओवर द लास्ट 75 इयर्स बट देयर आर सम थिंग्स दैट रिमाइंड अस ऑफ द लॉन्ग जर्नी दैट स्टिल लाइज अहेड टेक अ लुक एट दिस स्टोरी बिकॉज़ अ शॉकिंग इंसिडेंट इन उत्तर प्रदेश के प्रयागराज वन टाइम इलाहाबाद अ मैन इन प्रयागराज डिस्ट्रिक्ट फोर्स टू कैरी द डेड बॉडी of his 14 year old on his shoulder for kilometers more than 25 kilometers after the hospital administration failed to provide an ambulance to him the incident happened on tuesday bajrangi along with his wife savitri a resident of the karchana police station area of the district reached the srn hospital with their seriously injured son shivam who had got electrocuted Shivam could not be saved he died during the treatment after which Bajrangi looked for the ambulance when no ambulance was provided to him the father left with no option carried the body of his dead son on his shoulder he walked for roughly 5 kilometers by when the local people came together to provide assistance the Prayagraj police commissioner Vijay Vishwas Pant has ordered a high level probe in the matter listen in first to what the father had to say वो लेके अपने बच्चे को कंधे पे लेके आ रहे थे वहाँ पे एम्बुलेंस की सुविधा क्यों नहीं दी गई आपको एम्बुलेंस की सुविधा कोई नहीं दिया तो फिर एम्बुलेंस यहाँ से हुआ था तो पैसा मांग रहे हैं तो मेरे पास पैसा नहीं यार मैडम जो अधिकारी पदिकारी ने रोक के बच्चे के कहे कि आप कर रुको हमें पैसा दे रहे हैं तुमको चार हजार लागे पाँच हजार लागे में देंगे पब्लिक बोले हाँ पब्लिक बोली मगर सरकारी आपको कोई लाभ नहीं एम्बुलेंस वाले पैसा मांग रहे थे कहाँ तक पैदा लाए हैं यहाँ अस्पताल से लेकर नहीं के पुले थे Let's hope this never happens again. We've seen similar pictures over the years from different parts of the country. It is my firm belief that if India has to really truly be a superpower of the future, two areas, health and education, deserve equal access and that only is the way forward. It cannot be an unequal society that becomes a true superpower. Think about it. Stay well, stay safe. Good night. शुभ रात्रि जय हिंद नमस्कार Make your media plan smarter with India Today Live TV on your connected devices.
make your media plan smarter with India Today Live TV on your connected devices. Careless public health. All political parties traveling from different parts. Armed with facts. Looking at political facts. She takes the news by its horns. You think the future of these students are not hampered? Fierce, bold and direct. Setting the tone for the bigger stories. From every corner and every angle. Expect nothing but the unfiltered truth. News first, niceties later. Watch me Nabila Jamal on India Today. Everyone's busy finding what's trending. You're busy finding out why. India Today for those who research before reacting. Download the India Today app now. Make your media plan smarter with India Today Live TV on your connected devices. Presented by Green Lamb Laminates, Har Gusta Ki Saaf. Co-powered by HDFC Bank Parivartan, a step towards sustainable progress. In association with Hetic Fittings, make your furniture work beautifully. Offer pe offer, sirf kalyan jolas pe. China fires a barrage of missiles around Taiwan. China claims a hundred warplanes flew combat missions around Taiwan. Taiwan insists Chinese planes violated its airspace. Dress rehearsal for the invasion of Taiwan. Is China preparing for war? That's our top focus on the show. So on day one of its live fire exercises, China launched at least 11 Dongfeng ballistic missiles into the waters around Taiwan. Now there has been a spike in tension with Chinese fighter jets from Su-30 air superiority fighters to J-16 multi-role combat fighters crossing the median line between Taiwan and China before turning back. Taiwan has also scrambled fighter jets now Taiwan has learned to be moving its 155mm howitzers closer to their op areas or operational areas. The question remains, are war clouds gathering over Taiwan? Is what's happening right now a dress rehearsal before the final war for forcible occupation of Taiwan? Ambassador Gautam Bambavale, India's former ambassador to China and former High Commissioner to Pakistan, joins me on India First. I'm Gaurav Savant. As always, let's get started with the headlines at 10. Big India today scoop in the National Herald case after raids and ceilings. Will National Herald properties be attached next? Rahul Gandhi says he's not scared of either the Enforcement Directorate or Prime Minister Narendra Modi. We will intimidate. We will not be scared of Narendra Modi. Do you understand? Do what you have to do. There will be no difference. Rahul Gandhi takes on RSS a day after BJP's Tiranga rally. Congress MP says RSS did not hoist the tricolour for 52 long years. BJP claims Congress now showing pseudo love for the Tiranga. Shiv Sena MP Sanjay Rao's enforcement directed custody extended till the 8th of August in the Patra Chol case. Rao's wife. Varsha also summoned over transactions from her bank accounts. Chief Justice of India N.V. Ramanna recommends Justice U.U. Lalit as his successor. If appointed, he will be the second Chief Justice of India to be elevated to the bench from the bar. Ramanna set to retire on the 26th of August.
India shines at the Commonwealth Games 2022. India beat Wales to book hockey semis berth. Three boxers are short of medals. PV Sindhu and Kidambi reach round of 16 after dominant wins in round of 32. Jasmine! Jasmine! The ball to the left, Varun. This could be something, a chance, a snapshot taken and into the goal! Lead on three. And news coming in, China have fired 11 ballistic missiles in the waters around Taiwan. But news coming in, at least five of these ballistic missiles actually landed in the waters close to Japan. And Japan has objected to China's missile exercise in which five ballistic missiles landed in the exclusive economic zone of Japan. Tokyo has lodged a strong protest with China. The Exclusive Economic Zone, or EEZ, extends to 200 nautical miles from the territorial waters. Japan sees this as a major escalation by China. Taiwan, incidentally, has called the launching of 11 ballistic missiles as China following the North Korea template of ratcheting up tension by dropping missiles in the waters around another country, saying this is the template that North Korea follows. Let me quickly bring into this conversation Ambassador Gautam Bambavle, India's former ambassador to China and former High Commissioner to Pakistan on these latest developments. Ambassador, welcome on India first. Missiles landing in Japan's EEZ as Nancy Pelosi touched down in Tokyo. Sir, is there a message that's being sent by China or is this an accident in the waters? Missiles that were meant for waters around Taiwan actually reached waters around Japan. Yes, that's a very good question. It's very likely that it is an accident, accidentally falling into Japanese waters rather than uh, in the Taiwan Straits. But uh, when you undertake exercises of this kind, as you know very well, Gaurav, such mistakes can happen, do happen. Uh, and I think there has to be some restraint which has to be exercised by China. China needs to exercise restraint, but do we actually see that happening or is there an apprehension that they could actually further ratchet up tension? Ambassador, 11 missiles fired. This blockade around Taiwan, China claimed it launched 100 fighter jets. Intimidation tactics, or do we see this as validating some kind of Chinese war games of trying to take Taiwan by control, take control of Taiwan by force in the years ahead? Um, Gaurav, as uh, you know, this is a reaction to the visit of Nancy Pelosi, the Speaker of the US House of Representatives to Taiwan. And what the Chinese are doing is, is that they're trying to intimidate Taiwan and the authorities there, the government there. Uh, let's hope that, uh, you know, these exercises will be over in a couple of days, two or three days, and that things go back to normal. And that restraint is shown by all uh, the major powers, which is not just China, but also by the United States. In fact, that's the question I'm coming to in just a moment from now. Ambassador, please stay with us. The dragon very clearly is breathing fire. Hours after US House Speaker Nancy Pelosi departed from Taiwan, China launched massive military drills around Taiwan. Now, according to Taiwan, Beijing fired multiple ballistic missiles and long-range rockets towards Taiwan's waters, including not far from Taiwan's territorial waters. Taiwan's also countering China's provocations. It's deployed anti-aircraft missile systems. It's also launched its own interceptor jets against the violation of the median in the Taiwan Strait by Chinese jets. The dragon has bared its fangs and its raining missiles, long-range rockets and more at the Taiwan waters. 
Chinese military propaganda has peaked hours after US Speaker Nancy Pelosi left Taiwan after a 15-hour whirlwind tour. Beijing's state-sponsored media is flooding the internet with videos of military drills being carried out near Taiwan. The Taiwanese Defense Ministry has confirmed that the Chinese army launched at least 11 Dongfeng ballistic missiles into waters surrounding the northern, southern and eastern parts of Taiwan. A brigade of China's PLA 80th Group Army also carried out a live fire assessment of heavy firearms rapid strike. Over the next three days, the Chinese army will carry its large-scale military exercise in six waters around Taiwan. From land to air. 27 Chinese warplanes flew into Taiwan's air defense zone on Wednesday. They include six J-11 air superiority fighter jets, five J-16 multi-role fighter jets, and 16 Su-30 air superiority fighters. Taiwan has said that Chinese fighter jets were warned on the radio the moment they crossed the median between mainland China and Taiwan. The Taiwanese waters too are heating up. Both Chinese and US warships have been circling Taiwan amid Chinese anger over Pelosi's visit to the island. US has deployed four warships, including an aircraft carrier. U.S. Navy carrier USS Ronald Reagan is conducting operations in Philippines Sea. Bureau report, India Today. Ambassador, is China angry about Nancy Pelosi's visit or is it just using it as an excuse to justify use of force? Uh, look, Gaurav, you know, the geopolitical situation today across the globe is characterized by increasing competition between the United States, which is the existing big power in the world, and the rising power, which is China. And uh, this competition really comes to the fore when the issue of Taiwan uh, is exercised. And the visit by the U.S. Speaker of the House of Representatives of uh, the United States, uh, Nancy Pelosi, to Taiwan is a kind of um, red flag to Beijing. And uh, that's why Beijing is responding in this manner. But also, I think if you look at it from a larger perspective, before China or Beijing can take on the United States, it has to ensure that it's its own backyard, which is East Asia and Asia as a whole. And this is something that we are seeing playing out even now in front of us. Oh, absolutely. Are we, in your opinion, looking at a war for occupation of Taiwan or reunification, as China puts it, um, in? And is there a time frame? Because some have argued uh, the Chinese president has also said he will not wait indefinitely. So after his re-election in October, November, are we looking at China speeding up that, that reunification project of it, sir? Yeah. No, that's an excellent question, but it's also the $64 billion question. Uh, you know that Beijing has always said and continues to say that Taiwan is a province of China and that it will be ruled and governed from Beijing. So this reunification of Taiwan with the mainland, with the People's Republic of China, is something which has always been on the books of the Communist Party of China. But when that can happen is something that only the Chinese leadership will have to decide, because it looks at this point of time that if at all uh, Taiwan has to be reunified with the mainland, it will probably have to be with force. I don't see that happening uh, you know, in through a peaceful reunification. So and it looks steps... increasingly as if force will have to be used. Yes, sir. And the steps that we see now, uh, you know, surrounding Taiwan from six or seven sides, issuing a, a maritime notification, 
missile tests that are being carried out. Do you see this as some kind of a dress rehearsal or, an, or war game for the actual operation? Some have argued it could be, uh, you know, the time frame could be reduced from 2030 or 2040 to perhaps next 18 to 24 months. Gaurav, you're absolutely right. What they're doing right now could be looked upon as a kind of dress rehearsal for something to come in the future, not in the near future, but maybe in the longer term future, when uh, that sort of operation to take over um, the island of Taiwan is actually launched, will all depend upon the senior leadership of the Communist Party of China. But Gaurav, I would also like to point out to you and your viewers that the reunification of Taiwan with the mainland is something which is very much on the agenda of current General Secretary Xi Jinping. And the reason I say that is because you know that all the big leaders in the pantheon of the Communist Party of China, uh, Deng, uh, Mao Zedong, he actually formed the People's Republic and uh, he formed the, uh, you know, he formed the People's Republic of China. Yes. Deng Xiaoping then worked for the reunification of Hong Kong with the mainland. And now the last thing that is left is for the reunification of Taiwan. And if Xi Jinping has to be counted amongst the top leaders of the Communist Party of China and be equated to Mao and Deng, he will have to ensure that the reunification of Taiwan takes place with the mainland. So there is a push factor for Xi Jinping to do that. And later this year, if he gets an extension of a five years term, it is quite possible that such a reunification will take place within the next five years. Within the next five years, you say, um, and his re-election uh, in, in the People's Congress, uh, is that an if or a when in October and November, in your view, sir? In my view, I think it's a foregone conclusion. He will get that extension in this October or November, as you rightly say, at the party congress, uh, and that he will be China's top leader for the next five years, uh, starting from October, November this year. Right. I'll also come to the aspect about in case that happens and, you know, this attack on, of, uh, on Taiwan or reunification of Taiwan by forces to happen in the next five years, what will the world do? Nancy Pelosi, as of now, is being accused of putting Taiwan in harm's way. But what is the United States doing and what will the U.S. do in the years ahead? What does strategic ambiguity in today's day and age actually mean on ground? Will the U.S. come to Taiwan's defense and would that be restricted just to supplying perhaps weapons, ammunition and intelligence? Or will it also entail putting boots on ground? As of now, USS Ronald Reagan, one of the biggest aircraft carriers in the world, a Nimitz-class super aircraft carrier, is in the South China Sea. Is this a routine patrol to ensure that sea lanes of communication remain open? Or is there a signal that is also being sent out to China? USS Ronald Reagan, Nimitz-class aircraft carrier, somewhere east of in the South China Sea, Amongst the world's largest supercarriers, the USS Ronald Reagan is quietly carrying out a patrol to ensure free and open Indo-Pacific in the South China Sea. As China begins four days of live fire exercises, after having surrounded Taiwan from six sides, including firing ballistic missiles, the US carrier battle group is watching from a distance as it carries out a patrol in the Philippine Sea. Every move of the Chinese Navy and Air Force, including the crossing of the median by Chinese Air Force fighters before they return, and the Chinese ships and submarines are being monitored very closely, both by Taiwan and the United States. USS Ronald Reagan has conducted flight operations in the Philippine Sea. The carrier battle group is the only forward deployed battle group carrying out a regular scheduled patrol. As part of the patrol, 
the anti-ship and anti-submarine warfare exercises are being conducted by MH-60R Seahawk multi-role naval helicopters in the South China Sea. Amphibious assault ship Tripoli is also a part of the US Navy's 7th Fleet that is operating along with guided missile cruiser USS Chancellor Will. These warships have been sailing through the South China Sea in the past 24 hours. To show complete sea control and dominance, ensuring free and open Indo-Pacific, fueling at sea operations are also being undertaken. Simultaneously, US Army paratroopers are conducting combined active operations in Indonesia called Exercise Super Garor Strikes. The US Navy Pacific Fleet, incidentally, is the world's largest fleet. USS Abraham Lincoln, the second aircraft carrier part of the Pacific Fleet, is sailing in formation as part of RIMPAC 2022 exercises, where 26 nations are participating with 38 ships and 170 aircraft in a massive show of joint operations and to test interoperability. China and its actions around Taiwan are being watched closely by navies across the democratic world. Bureau Report, India Today. Ambassador Bambavale, what role do we see the United States play in this crisis? Support Taiwan with weapons and intelligence or will the help extend even beyond perhaps even boots on ground? Gaurav, you remember when uh, President Biden was asked this question a few weeks ago, his answer was that the United States will uh, work to defend uh, China, will work to defend Taiwan, Taiwan. I'm sorry. And uh, to what extent the United States will go to do that, whether it will just be through provision of arms, equipment, etc., uh, is something that will have to be seen. Uh, I do not see a situation where they will put boots on the ground, but the United States Navy will definitely have to be active uh, if uh, an invasion of Taiwan has to be thwarted. They will have to be active perhaps in the Taiwan Straits. Uh, some experts argue, sir, that China may slowly choke Taiwan, block the Taiwan Straits, block the supply of gas, perhaps cut undersea cable. At what stage in your appreciation, should the world intervene, if at all? Because the response so far to Chinese militarizing these waters or forcibly occupying some of creating islands, putting their navy all around, the world's response has been rather muted. Uh, you, you are right, uh, Gaurav. The world's response has been muted. Um, and some of the actions which you described earlier, like cutting an undersea, a critical undersea cable, would actually be looked upon as an act of war. Um, how, how the Taiwanese will respond is something that we will have to wait and see. But I think um, this is where, you know, the United States will be called upon to actually show that the Indo-Pacific is free and open. And uh, if push comes to shove, I believe that the United States will act in defense of Taiwan. And will it just be restricted to the United States or uh, will it be a bigger uh, body of democratic forces, uh, including perhaps Australia, AUKUS gets involved or other countries get involved? Does that send out a bigger message, sir? Would China be looking at these signals also? How the world responds from this point in the weeks and months ahead? Uh, Gaurav, uh, if at all uh, it comes, you know, an invasion of Taiwan by the mainland takes place, it will be a very big um, geopolitical signal, geopolitical move. And then all countries in 